Hello and welcome. My name's Mark Leavesley. I'm a professional paraglider pilot with over 30 years flying experience. I've flown all over the world doing competitions and teaching people to fly. In this series, I'm going to be showing you many of my hints and tips to help you have a better flying experience. I hope you enjoy. Hiya, my name's Mark Leavesley, and I'm going to be trying to teach you some of my methods and techniques I've learned over the years. So, on episode one, I'm going to be trying to show you the way I rig the paraglider. Um, when I started flying 31, 32 odd years ago, I would always be driving to the hill, nervous of rigging. It wasn't the flying that bothered me. It was can I open the glider today and set the risers and get connected before the paraglider bl blows away? It was always my problem um, getting connected and rigged. The glider would just blow across the hill and then I would get dead nervous and, and, and upset and um, wound up just to try and get the bloody thing under control and connected and, and, uh, and be happy that it's right before I took off. So... Um, so this first one is all about the rig. The way I, I've mastered the rig, it's dead easy. The glider doesn't blow anywhere. I've got loads and loads of time to check the risers before I move the glider into the launch position. So I hope you like it. It's for the absolute beginner. Well, I mean, maybe some advanced pilots find this useful, but this first episode is aimed at the absolute beginner. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, please hit and subscribe if you do. Spread the word. There's going to be many of these videos coming. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Well, it's looking a good day for it anyway. So I'll finish that cup of tea and we'll get going. Look at the wind. Okay, quite it's cold today. Okay, so we're on, we're on our site at the back of our house. The wind's coming straight into my face here. So I'll show you the way I arrive and I rig. Hopefully these new microphones are working good. I'm gonna leave the old pompon hat on today because it's so cold. <laughs> So, I always put the helmet on first. Let's get rid of this. Okay. So I always prepare the harness first. Forget the glider, because the longer the glider is open on the hill, the more chances of the glider blowing everywhere. So I don't touch the glider. I've got my helmet ready and I'm preparing the harness before anything else. Okay guys, so we're going to rig nice and easy, stress-free, without the wing blowing all over the place. This is a nice chilled way of rigging. So you can see the way the wind, the wind is blowing. It's blowing straight up the side of the hill. So I'll start to show you how you would normally do it, but I'm gonna slightly change it. So it's like this. Now normally, you would open it like this, and you would open your wing this way and this way, so you're ready to connect and launch. The trouble with this method is when the wing is open, especially when it's very windy, the wing tips blow and the whole wing blows away downwind and you get stressed. 
And the whole idea of this is to show you my methods where you're not going to get stressed and it simplifies your life and your rigging method. So try this. Put the glider side on. So this is the leading edge. It will all become a bit more apparent sort of thing the further we go into the rig. I'm just going to bring it away from the camera a bit more just so I've got enough room to open it fully. Okay, so. Bags off. Just chuck those there for now. So what I'm going to do I'm going to open the downwind wing first. This leaves some weight on the interwind side for, um, so it doesn't blow anywhere. So like this. So open the glider. So the downwind is open. And the interwind is still got weight on it. It's not going to blow anywhere. So I can take the risers out the riser bag. No rush. It can't blow anywhere because the wind is blowing through the wing at the moment. In fact, it's slightly off the wind, but we'll leave it like that. So. Let's find the downwind riser. So, check the downwind riser first. Make sure everything's nice and clear. But you get the idea. What we've got here, look, is we're side on to the wind. So the wind is running along the glider and it won't move. So now we'll open the interwind side. Now this side could possibly blow if it was very windy. It's not very windy now. The wind has actually slightly dropped. So let's imagine it's quite windy. So to stop this from blowing and rolling down the wing, just bring a little bit of the trailing edge over, a bit of the leading edge over, and then just put a bit of a fold in it there like that. Just push it down and that won't go anywhere. And if it's really windy and it does blow, it's probably just too windy for you to fly. So now, because the wind is rushing along the wing, I have no stress, no rush. I could just take my time checking the risers. Not. So now, look, we can check all the lines, make sure all the lines are nice and clear. And that weight is holding the wing down, so there's no rush at all. So now I could just bring that riser into the middle of the wing like that. Again, I'll just recheck this one. A's on top, B, C's, D's, yeah, they're all good. Bring that one to the middle of the wing, like so. So the wind is rushing through it, as I keep saying, and there's no rush. The wing, the wing will not blow away. Uh, you might get this happening. This is just with the slight differences in the angles of the wind or gusts, a little bit turbulence here off my trees, but it's a nice way to rig. I'll just open it again and show you. So don't leave it full. If it's a calm day, you can leave it fully open. But the, the idea of this method is you've come to the hill on a windy day, on a sorable day. So opening the normal way, it's going to blow and get messy and you're going to get stressed. If you open this way, side on to the wind. So that's the way we'd go flying now. The wind is coming straight here, straight along the glider. So it's a bit windy, here comes the wind now. So I'm just gonna flip that over, over, and just put a fold there. Push it down, happy days. So now I can just come back to my risers, put the helmet on, put the harness on. Pick the risers up and make sure they're still looking good, which they are. Yeah, and I'm ready to connect. And then once I'm connected, I can then take the controls. 
and walk my way around into position, ready to start ground handling. It really works well. And then the reverse of that is when you finish the day, if you relay the glider back out, side on to the wind, you can then rose your lines back in, hold the riser, chuck the lines in and bring the riser along the wing to the middle and leave them sitting out about two foot. Same with this one. Make sure the risers are good, rose them up like so, drop them in, bring them to the middle, leave them out a couple of foot like that and then we can do the pack. So I would always start with the interwinds end first to the middle so that's got the weight back on it and then I'd come for the trailing edge, sorry the downwind edge up to the interwind edge like this. So open the wing up fully like that and then we just concertina it in like that. So you roll it in and flip it back and then hold it underneath. Roll it in, flip it back, hold it underneath and just keep doing that till you get to the middle. Very simple. So this is a concertina pack. You can just roll the wing up, but I personally like to, to concertina them and put them away as neat as possible. Make sure this, this bit here, you don't leave it aiming into wind because it will flip and then it'll start to open. So actually tuck it down and underneath like that. So the trailing edge, we're not too worried about. We're not worried about any of this. It's this bit we want to look after. So what we'll do is find the center and just bring all the cells, the leading edge cells and just lay them all on top of each other like a book of cards like that. All the way to the tip. Like that, like that. And then this last bit, push the air out. There. Happy days. Hopefully that won't blow. I suppose what we could do is, if you're worried about it blowing, you could put a, bit, a little bit of something on the, on the end of it. Maybe just chuck that there. It's not much weight, but it should be okay. If it's windy, I wouldn't pack like this. If it was really windy, I would come to the middle and I would just bring all the leading edge cells in from both sides, put them between my knees, and then I'd put the compression strap round, and then I'd just pull it and sort of fan it and concertina it in just to get it away. And then I'd sort it out better back home. But it's a nice evening now, well, nice afternoon. Not too windy. So I might as well pack it nice. So on this one now, I'll lift the wingtip up and I'll walk underneath slightly and I'll push it down and back. Walk in, push it down and back. Lift it up, down and back. Make sure when you, if the down is you're pushing it down at the ground like that. If you don't, the wind will always win and, the, and it won't fold properly. So down at the ground, down at the glider and back. Down and back. One more, down and back. And then this bit here, we can't just leave that because it will blow open. So this wing tip now, we're just gonna tuck underneath the interwind side like that. Just tuck it under there, just to stop the wind catching it and it all blows back open. So now we can go back to the leading edge cells. So all this side is good, we've done that nice. And now we come in from this side. Just give them a nice tug so they flatten down nicely. Like so. That looks good. And then we come to here, typically the wind's picking up again now. Take this off and we're going to close it from the leading edge, sorry, the interwind edge over to the downwind edge. You'll see why now. So we're gonna take it underneath 
nice and tight and close the cells like that. Close the cells over the top. The reason we've done that is now the wind is hitting and just rolling over and hitting the bottom of the wing. It can't open the wing. If we did it the other way and brought this side on top, it could easily blow open again. We want to do everything to let the wind work for us, not against us. So that won't open now and it's windy again now. So now I'm just going to tidy it up before I put it back in its bag. So just sort this, this out, make sure it's wound over the top nicely. Looks pretty good. Just push the air out to the leading edge. So we're pushing the air from the trailing edge, slowly up out of the leading edge like this. Just gently pushing it out. Okay. So now we can put the riser bag back on. It's really important to use your riser bag because if you just tuck the glider risers in, all these malons and the brakes and all the metal, metal bits and bobs and the plastic pulleys will rub against the cloth, the material, and it will damage the wing. You might not see it, but you are damaging your wing. So use your riser bag. It's a little bit more time, a little bit more of a mess but it's worth looking after your paraglider. I always, always use my riser bag and make sure you tuck them all the way in. So all the metal buckles and the plastic bits are all completely hidden and then you can drop it on the wing. So I keep the compression strap with me because if it was dead windy, as I said earlier on, I would bring all the cells together and I would strap them tight so it can't open and then just sort the trailing edge out. So I always keep a strap with me just in case it's got to be a sort of an emergency quick pack. And it's not gonna go anywhere now. So the whole idea of the rig and the pack is to let the wind actually be my friend. The wind is actually working for me. If you don't already have a concertina bag, get a concertina bag. They save so much time and effort uh, and you can pack away so much nicer and you can fold the glider up and zip it up. I personally think this gin one, the gin compress, I think this is the best one ever made, but there's lots of good ones, but I love this one. <sighs> Typically it's blowing strong again now. So I always get the concertina bag relatively nice at the side of the glider. And then I'll bring the leading edge on top and I'll always just try and get a clip around it. Just belt and braces that it's not gonna move or go anywhere. So it can't now. I could so sort these, these cells out a bit neater now. I will be doing lots more of these videos if you guys enjoy them. Many of you seem to enjoy them. I'm not saying my, my way is the way or the best way. I'm, they just work for me. Just give it a try. There's loads of great pilots and people that do this. And I'm sure there are probably better ways than mine. But this way works well for me. It has done for many years, especially this rig in the wind because I used to get proper wound up with that glider blowing everywhere but where I wanted it. So now I'm just going to ease the air again, ease the air out up to the leading edge and you'll see so far this bag is the same as any other bag and as I say there are a couple of others that are almost identical but I really love this bag. So just push that air out a little bit. Now what's cool about this bag is it's got these black lines and these are to show you where to fold it. So if we fold it to each black line like that, it matches up with the zip perfectly as you will see 
in a moment. So final one to the top, push the air out like that. And now look, the zip is right where you want it. What a great bag. <laughs> I think there's another couple that have perhaps copied this now. But I really do think this one is, is a cracking bag. Final push. And a little handle on top as well. So now because it's zipped up, it's compressed all the air out. Just a brilliant bag. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you have. And we'll do some more as soon as the weather comes back. I think tomorrow's looking rubbish. But later in the week, I'll do something else. Cheers.